In recent footy seasons, we've been blessed to witness some outstanding debut seasons by players in their first year at the highest level. In today's video, we're going to highlight 14 brilliant first years by players in the AFL since the year 2000. If we start with the most recent and work backwards, the first has to be Harry Sheasel. Sheasel was drafted as a midfielder forward the year previous, but Alastair Clarkson felt the best use of his talents in Season 1 would be to deploy him in a halfback rebounding role. This move worked wonders as Sheasel broke the record for the most disposals on debut with 34 against the West Coast Eagles, and that set the tone for what would become an incredible season. He reached 30 possessions six times in his first eight games, on his way to winning both the Rising Star Award and North Melbourne's Best and Fairest Award in his first year. The year previous, Nick Dacos burst onto the scene after being a father-son selection to Collingwood at pick four. Dacos slotted easily into Collingwood's back six, again another example of a midfielder starting their career at half-back. Like Sheasel, Dacos would claim the Rising Star Award in his debut season, averaging nearly 26 possessions a game, and immediately became an offensive weapon for the Pies with his class and absolutely precise skill. The success of Sheasel and Dacos in these halfback roles seems to have inspired clubs to use their top prospects in similar ways, with Colby McKercher and Harley Reid being set for similar roles in 2024. Sam Walsh is the first pick one to make this list, having been taken from the top of the pile in 2018. Walsh's debut season stands out in particular given that he played predominantly a midfield role in his first year. He averaged 25 possessions, with roughly 10 of those being contested possessions, whilst also averaging 3 clearances and 3 tackles a game. He was a comfortable Rising Star winner that year, whilst placing 4th in Carlton's best and fairest, and was promptly handed a spot in Carlton's leadership group for the following season. 2018 had a couple of outstanding first years. Jaden Stevenson was selected at pick 6 by Collingwood in the previous draft, and he rewarded their faith by winning the Rising Star Award in his debut season. Playing as an opportunistic half-forward, Stevenson managed 38 goals in his first season, along with nearly 3 tackles a game. Furthermore, he contributed 2 goals in a losing grand final effort against the West Coast Eagles. Stevenson now plays for North, and he kicked the second most amount of goals for them in 2023. He remains one of only a handful of draftees to play in a grand final in his debut season, but we'll talk about that in another video. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out. Tim Kelly's first season is worth a mention here, although it is also worth mentioning he was drafted at the mature age of 23. Kelly slotted straight into a strong Cats midfield for the 2018 season, averaging 23 touches, 4 clearances and 3.5 tackles a game in his debut year. He'd poll 13 Brownlow votes, finishing second in the Cats best and fairest, and be awarded the best first year player award. Kelly now plays for West Coast and won their Best and Fairest Award in 2023. Now let's skip back to 2015 when Jesse Hogan bursts onto the scene. Unlike all of the other players mentioned so far, Hogan didn't debut in his first year on an AFL list. Nonetheless, his first season playing games was brilliant as he kicked 44 goals in a Demon side that finished 13th. He finished 4th in their Best and Fairest, as well as claiming that year's Rising Star Award. Hogan has had an up and down career since then, but now starts 2024 in ominous form for the GWS Giants. Jager O'Meara also had a fantastic first season at AFL level, back when he played for the Gold Coast Suns. Like Hogan, O'Meara was a mini draft selection which meant he sat on their list for a year before being able to play games. But when he debuted in 2013, his talent shone through, and he averaged 21.6 disposals whilst kicking 16 goals on the way to winning the Rising Star Award. Following his time at Gold Coast, O'Meara put in a respectable stint at Hawthorne before joining Fremantle, where he is now a best 22 midfielder. One debut season that often goes unmentioned, but was still brilliant, was that of Toby Green. These days, Green is considered one of the best players in the game, primarily as a forward given he just kicked 66 goals in 2023. But Green was drafted as a genuine midfielder, and in his first season he averaged an enormous 28.4 disposals a game for the Giants. Green was ineligible for the Rising Star Award in 2012 due to being suspended, but would manage to finish second in the Giants' inaugural best and fairest count. 2012 saw another brilliant debut season, this time from a mature age recruit named Dane Zorko. Zorko was 23 when he joined the Brisbane Lions and made an instant impact at AFL level. He played 16 games, averaging 20 possessions, 6.5 tackles and a goal a game. Zorko is still around for the Lions as a 34 year old and remains one of their most important on-field leaders. Dyson Heppel's year in 2011 was another brilliant debut season. Selected at pick 8 in the previous year's draft, Heppel slotted onto a halfback flank for Essendon and immediately became an important player for them. 
He averaged 21 and a half disposals a game and used the ball with damaging precision on his way to finishing seventh in their best and fairest and winning the Rising Star Award. Heppel remains on Essendon's list in 2024, but it may well be his final year in the AFL. In 2010, Michael Barlow produced one of the most memorable debut seasons in modern times. Again, Barlow was a mature age recruit and was 23 by the time he debuted, but his impact was instant. He broke a then record for possessions on debut with 33 touches in round one, before following it up the following week with 34. Barlow was considered one of the serious Brownlow contenders for the first 13 games of the season, before he would famously break his leg and not play a further game. But in that time, he had six games of over 30 touches, kicked more than a goal a game and polled 12 Brownlow votes. His leg break remains one of Fremantle's largest what-if moments. But Barlow wasn't the only mature age recruit to make a big impact in 2010. James Podsiadley made his debut for the Geelong Footy Club at the age of 28 and immediately became a key pillar of their forward line. He kicked 49 goals that year, averaging nearly three contested marks and amazingly polled 13 Brownlow votes. While he is different to most players on this list given his age, the mature age recruitment of James Potsy Adley to Geelong will be remembered as a stroke of genius. No list of brilliant debut seasons is complete without including Potsy Adley's teammate, Joel Selwood, back in 2007. Selwood was the Cats' equal highest ever draft pick, and it's safe to say that they got that pick right, given he would contribute to a Premiership win in his first year. He remains one of the youngest Premiership players of the modern era, and contributed significantly to Geelong's fortunes in finals. He had 22 touches and 5 clearances in their qualifying final, and then led the Cats for clearances in the grand final too. He would retire 15 years later having won 4 premierships, and the status of being an absolute Geelong legend. And finally, we need to acknowledge Chris Judd. Judd was famously not selected for round 1 of his debut season, and he would respond by kicking 4 goals and being best on ground in his waffle debut. That would be the final time Judd would not be selected for an AFL side. He would win a Rising Star nomination in his first game and average 15 touches and a goal a game in 2002. Stats don't tell the story with Chris Judd. You just have to watch the guy play to understand that a champion was born as early as his first season. So that's 14 of the best debut seasons we've seen since 2000. Is there anyone in 2024 you think can make this list? The best candidates in my view would be Riley Sanders, Colby McKercher and Harley Reid. But comment your thoughts below. Goodbye for now.